Welcome to the QC2 Lab, or the Quality Control Collaboratory for short, here at the University of Southern Maine. I bet you didn't think you were going to be in a chemistry lab for Maine Beer Night. But sit back and let me take you on a tour of the lab and explain to you why chemistry is so important to the craft beer industry. Well, now that we're in the lab, let me formally introduce myself. I am Dr. Lucy Benedict, and I'm the director of the lab here. And our lab serves the brewing industry in a few different ways. Uh, first, we, use, we offer testing for brewers um, so that they can get information about different uh, aspects of their beer, like ABV and IBU and things like that. We also offer workshops to our brewers uh, so they can learn how to do quality control in-house. And then last, um, but definitely not least, my favorite part is research, which I'll show you a little bit later on our tour. But for the first part of our tour, I'm gonna pass you off to our lab coordinator uh, extraordinaire, Sam White. Thanks for the introduction, Lucy. Before getting into the specifics about our testing services, I'd like to give you a little bit of context about the lab. We are a nonprofit, and all of the revenue that we generate from our testing services is funneled back into the lab. That, in conjunction with funding through the Maine Economic Improvement Fund, allows us to offer our services to the craft beverage industry and to also train our undergraduate students who conduct most of the testing services that we offer. So why would a brewery send us samples for testing? First and foremost is to get a baseline for their beer so that they know important characteristics like alcohol by volume or IBU, which I'll talk about in a little bit. This ensures that their beer is true to type. So when you're drinking something that's called a lager, it's what you expect a lager to look like and has the bitterness that you would expect of a lager. It also ensures that there's consistency in that beer from batch to batch. One of our most popular testing services is alcohol by volume which is performed by this instrument, which we affectionately call Big Al. Big Al is a density meter and a near-infrared spectrometer, and we use it to not only test for the alcohol content in your beer, but also calories, sugar content, and specific gravity. He's very talented. Another routine test that we perform is for IBUs, or International Bitterness Units. You might be familiar with this metric, which tells us the iso-alpha acid concentration of a sample of beer. We also use this instrument, which is the spectrophotometer, to determine the color of a beer. That measurement is called a standard reference material, or SRM, number that we get, and it is a really good way for a brewery to know that their beer is consistent and that that color that a customer experiences is the same from one brew to the next. There are two more tests that I'm excited to tell you about. The first uses polymerase chain reaction technology to detect Pediococcus and Lactobacillus beer spoilers, which are two strains of bacteria where they can harbor the hops resistance gene. So unlike most bacteria, which can't survive in beer, these can. And they produce lactic acid, which gives beer a kind of sour off flavor. You definitely don't want it in your beer before packaging. So with traditional methods of plating bacteria, it would take many days to find out if you had a sample with these beer spoilers, but with PCR, it only takes a couple hours. Another really cool test that we do is for gluten. So if you enjoy gluten-free beer, that beer has been shown to contain less than 10 parts per million of gluten. It's a really important metric for people who have gluten intolerance or celiacs, and we're really happy to be able to provide both of these tests to the brewing community. 
Well, thanks, Sam, for that amazing tour of the testing services for our lab. Now we're going to talk about research in the lab, which is my favorite part of our lab. I'm an analytical chemist by trade, which really means that my job is to look for stuff in different types of stuff. Um, that's the most basic uh, description of it. And so as a beer chemist, what I'm doing is I'm looking for what chemicals make up the beer. And those chemicals can change with any variation in the brewing process, and it changes vastly between different types of beer. One of the things that my research focuses on is sensory. So if you crack a beer open, or if you've got a beer right now in front of you, what you wanna do is just give it a swirl and smell what kind of compounds or what kind of smells, flavors, come to you. Now normally if this was filled with chemicals, you wouldn't smell it, but since we've got beer here, we're gonna take a whiff. And I smell things in here, like I smell pine needles and I smell hops and I can smell, um, you might smell roses or sometimes banana and sometimes butter, which may not be a smell that you want in your beer. And so there are volatiles that we really want to see in our beers, like myrosine, which comes from hops and pinene and linalol. Um, those are all great hop compounds. So if you're a fan of those New England IPAs, those are those um, flavors that are gonna come out to you. If you're a fan of more lightly hopped beers um, or lagers, you're gonna get more of the esters and things like that, which are those flowery compounds that come out. Um, sometimes we have bananas um, that come out. And then there's one of the compounds that most beer drinkers don't like, although not everybody hates it, and that's diacetyl. And that's a butter compound or a butter flavor. And if you've ever been to a movie theater, if you've never experienced diacetyl in your beer, um, but if you've ever smelled butter, if you've ever been to a movie theater and smelled butter popcorn, diacetyl is the compound that's responsible for that smell. And so we can look at all of those compounds in beer here. In fact, beer is made up of, of over 200 um, different volatile compounds that have been tested. Now, how do we do that? That's what I want to talk about just briefly. Um, we do that using this instrument right here, which we call a gas chromatograph um, with a mass spec. Now, if you're a forensics fan and you watch some of those CSI shows on TV, they use this instrument. It's great for separating out compounds. That's the chromatograph part. And then we get to the mass spec part and that helps us to identify our compounds and tell us how much is in our beer or any sample that we're looking for, whether that be hair or soil or beer. Um, and that's what we do on our research side. Um, not only in our research side do I run research projects um, with different breweries in the area, but we also have our undergrads who have done research projects and we study everything from these volatile compounds up through uh, zinc and calcium and magnesium that might help yeast grow. Thank you for joining us on our tour of the lab. If you want to check us out online, we're at qc2.beer or you can always shoot us an email or give us a phone call with questions. This lab wouldn't be here without the support from the Maine Economic Improvement Funds or the University of Southern Maine. Thank you.